we really happy here with this lonely game we play looking for words to say oh, searching but not finding understanding anywhere and we lost Both afraid to say we're just too far away from being close together from the start. We try to talk it over, but the words got in the way, and we're lost inside. This lonely game we play. Thoughts of leaving disappear every time I see your eyes. No matter how hard I try. Understand the reasons why we carry on this way. Cause we're lost in a masquerade. Good morning, Unity. We're glad to have you here. And now we're going to do our greeting song, We Come Together. Take a look at the person next to you say I recognize the God in you I recognize the God in you oh feel the love in the sanctuary 
in TV land. Lift your voice, repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together, we come together. We come together in the name, the name of love. love. We come together. 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 We come together in the name of love. Take a look at the person next to you. Say, God loves you, and I love you too. God loves you, and I love you too. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice, repeat after me. We come together. 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 Out there in virtual land, you just pretend. Take a look at the person next to you. Say, hi, Ralph, how are you? Say, namaste, I bow to you. Namaste, I bow to you. Oh, feel the love in the sanctuary. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice, repeat after me. We come together. We come together. We come together. We come together in the name of love. We do come together in the name of love. If you're out there in virtual land, say amen. Thank you, guys. And here. All right. I am Reverend Brenda Peters, and let's start with our announcements. First, on November 25th, that's next week, y'all. I know this month has just flown by, but at no on November 25th at 6.30 p.m., we're going to be hosting a virtual expression of gratitude on Zoom. And this is where we all will come together and, you know, take in all the blessings that we've had and put words to them. And so make sure that you mark your calendars, 6.30, Wednesday night, um, be on Zoom. The link is in the email blast if you need it. If you have forgotten where it's at. It, there it is. All right. Also, we have a new YouTube channel. It's called Meditation Moments by Unity of Omaha. It's a place where you can go and if you need to just zen out for 10 minutes, click on one of the meditations and sit back and relax and listen to the meditations on there. And we will be uploading new ones um, regularly so make sure you keep checking it out subscribe to it that's the best way you can get all the the new ones holiday bazaar today is the last day if you have anything any product that you're selling maybe even a service um, make sure that you put together pictures prices uh, any information, contact information that you're willing to have, because this will be on Facebook also, um, out there, so people can get a hold of you and, you know, buy your products, try your service, whatever you may have to offer. And any of that information goes to uh, Lisa Choquette at her uh, email address. Just email her, and she'll be able to um, whip up a little... We have a little jam board thing going on, and she'll whip up a little uh, information board for you, and you'll be up and running. We are going to start this the first week in November. So today is the last day 
December, I mean. I, I said that. Just kidding. December, <laughs> the first week in December. So make sure you get all your information into her today. Okay, be in the know. Sign up to make sure that you get our e-blast. It's very important. Um, this is where a lot of our information comes from. So make sure you sign up to do that. Email vicki at vicki at unityomaha.org. Also, we do have a lovely fellowship opportunity after service. It's at 11.30 on Zoom. Again, the link is in the email blast. Um, make sure you join us for fellowship. It really, 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 really helps. And it's one another way that we can gather together in the name of love. Ah, look at that. I'm so good. Anyway, um, also, if you do need to be held in prayer, prayer chaplains are standing by. Just go ahead and email at prayer at unityomaha.org. And, of course, as always, we do need your support. Um, you know, abundance, prosperity flows in, around, and through me. And so what you give, you receive. So please make sure to give your offerings and your tithes to us. You can do it online by Unity of Omaha. Don go down to the Donate button and click. Or you can mail in your check to the office, to the address that you see there. And now, with all this energy and excitement, Let's go ahead and say our vision statement. In oneness with universal energy, we celebrate a world united in divine love. And our mission statement, we raise vibrational consciousness through creative teachings, positive prayer, and a nurturing community. Yes, we do. And now let's go ahead and sink into a time of prayer. So if you would, close your eyes or lower your gaze and just take a minute. Take a minute to connect with that energy within. We are so blessed. It might not look like it. It might not feel like it. But we are. COVID-19, even though it's given us some tragedies, it's given us some sadness, it does have its blessings. They may be hidden, but one thing is for sure that they've shown us that we are interconnected. It doesn't matter where you are in this globe. We are all affected energetically, spiritually, physically. We are interconnected. The other blessing it's given us is time to slow down, to look around to our lives, to see what's missing, what's not, what needs to be changed, what doesn't. It's given us a time to reflect. It's also given us a time to look towards those we love, and truly, truly look at them with love and extend that smile or call that person that you haven't called for a while and say, I see you and I hear you. We have had these blessings from this moment from this year. So it's important. And we give gratitude and thanks that we are able to see them and acknowledge them and be aware. With appreciation, we open up our hearts and say, I love you. I am you. And so it is. Amen. So now it's time for the spirit song. So those of you who know how we do this, if you would even stand with us at home, we would appreciate it. Plenty of room in the family. 
inspiration comes from Brene Brown, her book, Braving the Wilderness. She says, belonging to ourselves means being called to stand alone, to brave the wilderness of uncertainty, vulnerability, and criticism. And with the world feeling like a political and ideological combat zone, this is remarkably tough. We seem to have forgotten that when we were utterly alone, we're connected to one another by something greater than group membership, politics, and ideology. That we're connected by love and the human spirit. No matter how separated we are by what we think and believe, we are part of the same spiritual story. We are connected by the heart. Where do you end? Where do I start? Anything you pray for, if fear is in your way, I am here to listen to anything you need to say. Your You're a part of me and I'm 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And just so you know, those of you that aren't here, which is everybody basically, um, Tanya is with us. She's sitting over to the distance. She is social distancing and being mindful. So that beautiful voice is still in the room. Oh, Thanksgiving's coming up, right? And don't we have a lot to be thankful, thankful for? We really do. And as we continue with this theme, the theme of interconnectedness, a lot of things have come to mind recently. And a lot of what has come to mind is how we see things, how we see it, how we see it. Because what I know is, after living through this past year, that the way I see things are probably way different than how anybody else does. And there's laughter in the room here, and I hope there's some laughter at home because it's the truth. And sometimes we just have to laugh at it. But it also brought to mind why this is, this is the case. And so here's a definition of something that is going on in our country, in our world, in humanity, period. The quality or condition inherent in a body that exhibits opposite properties or powers in opposite parts or direction, or that exhibits contrast properties or powers in contrast parts or directions, the condition have poles. What? What is she talking about? I'm talking about polarity. We live in a world of polarity. And I was like, what? That was a bunch of mumbo jumbo. And that was a bunch of, bunch of mumbo jumbo to really talk to us about what we do all the time. We see things as good or bad, up or down, in or out, left, right, peace, conflict, love, hate, rich, poor. For some reason, in this human form, we have come to this belief that the only way that I can appreciate one thing is to see and, and experience the other. That's a human condition. That has nothing to do with the divinity, with our spirit, with our essence. 
that is something that we have made up. And it really doesn't have any power over us. Charles Fillmore, one of our co-founders, says the so-called principles of good and evil are non-existent outside the sense mind, outside of this mind, outside of our humanness. The true God, spirit, universe, essence, whatever you call it, cannot be known to the sense consciousness. We haven't that capacity to truly have that experience. And whoever postulates a being who is good or not good, according to his sense concepts, is building a man of straw, a race of shallowness. And when I'm talking about a race, I'm talking about the human race. When we come to that place where we have to define each other as good or bad, us or them, we or they, what we're doing is we're creating a shallow experience. And I don't know about all of you. You know, all of you that are sitting at home right now, whether you're sitting on your sofa, sitting in front of a TV, sitting in front of a computer, looking at that little connection to the world in your hand called a smartphone or a tablet, each and every one of us, because of our humanness, does this. And we are all perpetuating this exercise of seeing things differently. We're all perpetuating this calling out of something as good or bad. When in essence, that interconnection means it's all related. There was a film several years ago, and honestly, I saw this clip before I ever saw the film. But it really, to me, describes and defines when we step out of this humanness and move fully into the essence of spirit, the essence of universal consciousness, whatever you want to call it. When we move into that, it's the truth of what is. It's actually from a film called I Heart the Huckabees, and it's called The Blanket Truth. So enjoy this clip. Okay, let's get started. Is this part of my investigation? Yes, say this blanket represents all the matter and energy in, in the universe, okay? You, me, everything. Nothing has been left out, all right? All the particles, everything. What's outside this blanket? More blankets, that's the point. Blankets, everything. Exactly, this is everything, okay? Let's just say that this is me, right? And I'm, what, 60 odd years old, and I'm wearing a gray suit, blah, blah, blah. And let's say over here, this is you, and you're, I don't know, you're 21, you've got dark hair, etc. And over here, this is uh, Vivian, my wife and colleague. And then over here, this is the Eiffel Tower, right? It's Paris. And this is a war, and this is a, a, a museum, and this is a disease, and this is an orgasm, and this is a hammer. Everything is the same, even if it's different. Exactly. But our everyday mind forgets this. We think everything is separate, limited. I'm over here, you're over there, which is true. But it's not the whole truth, because we're all connected. Because we are connected. Sure, 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 sure. Okay? Yeah. All right, now. We need to learn how to see the blanket truth all the time, right in the everyday stuff. And that's what this is for. Why? Why what? Why do I need to learn how to see the blanket thing all the time in the everyday stuff? Well, you wouldn't want to miss out on the big picture, would you? Uh Uh-uh. That's partly why you're here, right? Uh And this is it. I'm talking about it right now. I mean, it'll take a while for you to get it, you know? But it'll help you. How? When you get the blanket thing, you can relax because everything you could ever want or be, you already have and are. That sounds pretty good. Sounds very good. Everything you could ever want or be, you already have and are. Did you notice when he was going through that blanket that he didn't say that this this was good and this was good and this was good and all that? He didn't just name good things. He didn't just name those things that we think are good. Keep in mind that good and bad are strictly a human concept. In the universal energy of allness, there is no such thing as good or bad. There is no such thing as left or right, up or down. It just is. It just is. But in that twine of connection, in that blanket of connection that he was talking about, did you hear? He said, here's a war. Here's love. 
here's a disease. But it's all part of this experience. It's all part of this divine journey. There's no separation. We are all part of this. And we can choose. No, choose. Now, granted, we've been conditioned. We've been conditioned our entire lives to see the polarity differences in everything. You know, we do it with our children. We reward them when they're good. We punish them when they're not. We're setting us up with that from the time of birth. When they cry, they get a bottle, okay? Or they get hell. They get soothed. We do this in everything we do. We do it in our, in our schools. We do it in our workplaces. We are conditioning ourselves to live and see everything in a realm of polarity, good and bad. And so we have a choice. We have a choice to begin when we notice it and it twinges us something that that's bad. We go, okay, my perception, I may be seeing it as bad right now. What if I were to look at it a different way? What if I were to not have it affect me? Because we also know that we put value on things and we show that by our reactions. We're constantly reacting. We're living in a reactive society. You know, unfortunately, we're living in a society right now. It happened right here in Omaha last night. Somebody made me mad. I'm going to go shoot them up. That's silly. And we know it is. But for some reason, we have come to a place where we think that we have to react to things that we do not see as good. I learned a long time ago that things that I see as good, someone else may not. Things that I see as bad, someone else may not. And so it's all a matter of perspective. You know, in Buddhism, Buddhism encourage us, encourages us to be wary of opposite concepts. Not only good and evil, but success and failure, rich and poor. Even the duality between enlightenment and delusion. Because what they teach in Buddhism is, if you are focused on success and failure, then you're bringing failure into your focus. If you're focusing on the fact that there is good and bad, then you're allowing bad to be in your focus because you're trying so hard not to be that. You're trying so hard not to be a failure. And you're adding energy to that. But I got a kick when I was reading about this, when it said even the duality, not to get caught up in the duality between enlightenment and delusion. Can you be so focused on enlightenment that you lose your path and you become even more delusionary? I think so. I've run across a few people like that in my day, you know. I've said before, when somebody tells me that they are enlightened, I just kind of grin. Like, okay, sure. And I don't see you walking on water. You know, I don't see you moving that mountain. But to me, when I talk about being enlightened, it is opening myself up to being aware. So do you see where... This whole aspect of how we see things, this whole aspect of polarizing thinking is affecting us in our everyday lives. It's affecting us personally, as communities. It's affecting us as a country right now. Why do we always have to make someone else wrong in order to feel right? Why do we always have to make somebody out to be the bad guy so that we can feel good about ourselves? It seems like that's the kind, of, the kind of society we're living in right now. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be amazing if we chose to just go, you know what? I'm good, so are you. I'm living in a place of joy, and it is my desire that you have that joy as well. I'm living in a place of peace, 
And you don't have to be miserable because of that. But what I would love to see is that you live in that place of peace with me. That you join me in this energy. That you join me in this consciousness. In order for me to feel love inside, to feel that divine presence, that divine power by whatever name you call it, doesn't mean that you have to feel less. Doesn't mean that someone else has to do without. Because when we talk about that presence, when we talk about that energy, there is no limitation to it. It is ever present. And we are the ones that create the limitation. I actually looked up to see what the Hindu tradition taught in regards to good and bad or the polarities. And, you know, if we think about it, they teach that good and bad basically does not exist in the realm of spirit, just like we do. But they teach that good and bad are products of our own being because of karma and dharma. Isn't that what we do? When we begin to see things as good or bad, when we begin to say, I'm bad or I'm good or they're bad or they're good, aren't we creating that in our world? We are. So it's interesting to me that that I look at a lot of the major traditions across the planet. And I see them having this understanding that the depth, that the whole idea of having to experience something one way and a negative way to appreciate it in a good way is human made. As Charles Fillmore said, it is a sense mind, a human mind that creates that. It's not a spirit being. It's not a heart creation. And so something else I want us to remember is that interconnection means connected with all things, all ideas, all actions, and on and on and on. But we have a choice on how we see it. I hope that you remember that that segment on the blanket truth. Because we're not separated from anything. We're not separated from any idea, any perception. But what matters is whether we lay hold to it or not. I could have a miserable life and see the world as evil and bad, as greedy and all of those things. And how do you think my life would be if I saw it that way? It'd be. It'd be all of that, wouldn't it? I'd be miserable. I'd be, probably be cranky. Not that I get cranky. But I'd probably be cranky. Because everything that I would be seeing would be feeding into that negative energy within me. And so I challenge you. I implore you. See the good. Because how you see it and how you interpret it is all you. Every bit of it is all you. So it's your choice. It's the gift that you give to yourself to see things in the light, to see things as joyful, to see things as good, to see things as anchored in the truth that it is. Because in the spiritual realm, it just is. And we add the energy to it. We add the words to it. We add the perceptions to it. So I would love for us to take a few moments and take these ideas into a time of deep connection, into a time of meditation. And so as we do this, I'm going to ask you to bring your focus Focus on your breathing. Exhale. Let go of everything in this moment. And as you let go of everything, you're creating space. Space for the good. You're creating space to allow yourself 
to see without attachment. To allow yourself to be aware, aware of ideas, aware of perceptions. And now we focus, focus on the breath. Focus on that breath coming in through our nose or through our mouth and going deep down into that heart space. For it is in that heart space that spiritual consciousness exists. And so as we gently and deeply breathe into that space, we call in all that we hold sacred. We call in the joys, the beauty of a sunrise, the rustling of birds playing in the leaves, the flowing of the water in a mountain stream. And we let all of that flow through us, charging every cell of our being with the gift of divine love. charging every cell of our being with inherent peace. Opening ourselves to the awareness of how we see things and making a concerted effort to see things differently. even to see things righteously, which that word means to see things in the right way, with right consciousness, right attitude. continue to breathe deeply and follow that breath. We allow ourselves to feel a whole difference in attitude filling us. A whole difference in perspective. Replacing that shallow straw creation with one of light. with one of wholeness, with oneness, with universal connection. We're going to take a few moments and move into the silence and allow that just to anchor deeply at the core of our being in the silence.
In this moment, I choose to see clearly. In this moment, I choose to see through the lens of peace and love. In this moment, I understand the blanket truth. In this moment, I commit to being the being I was born to be. I embrace the I am nature. I embrace my relationship to all that is and recognize the lack of separation and the interconnectedness with the allness. So I invite you to come back to this time, to this space, to this moment, and bring that energy with you. And as you do, take a deep cleansing breath, and we hold gratitude in our hearts for the opportunities that we've had, and we celebrate celebrate who we are. And so it is. Amen. Oh, so we've got one more Sunday for the affirmation that we have for this month. It's like rivers flowing from one source. We are all connected. And even though that is where we, what we're focusing on this month, we know that that is true every month. And so now we move into the time that when we were all here, we would do our, our, walk of, our walk of abundance, our sacred walk of abundance. And I know that sitting in your home may not feel as sacred or may not feel the amount of connection that you do when you're here. But believe me when I tell you that as we are here, we are opening our hearts and pouring our hearts out to make that connection as strongly as we can. And so I hope that somehow through the airwaves, through the wires, through whatever system that you're using, that you feel that connection with us, you feel that sacredness, and you hold an aspect of gratitude for what we bring to you. And so through this act of, of this demonstration of prosperity, we invite you to support this ministry, support our mission and vision, support who we're here to be, Support that we are able to come together on Sundays and bring this into your home. Believe me, it is no small feat to do this. And so as you are, as you are contemplating your gift to this ministry, knowing that you may make this gift either via our website, unityomaha.org, and you scroll down to the donate button, or you may drop something in the mail to 3424 North 90th Street, Omaha, Nebraska. 68134, knowing that all of that will get to us and will help support this ministry as we continue to move forward. But while you're contemplating that, we we'll allow our, ask our music team to support you in music, and then we'll come back together in just a minute for a time of blessing. Wonderful. Something. Something wonderful is happening to me right here, right now. Something wonderful. Something. Something wonderful is happening to me right here, right now. I can feel it in me, body. I can feel it in me so I can feel it in me heart and it won't let go something wonderful yeah something wonderful is happening to me right here right now yeah something wonderful something something wonderful is happening to me 
Right here, right now. And that's a choice too, isn't it? It is. And something wonderful, that's a, that's a call that we make. So. And I didn't do before they sang, I got ahead of myself. I hadn't had to do this from up here for a while with us having the, um, the recorded version. So know that the affirmation for our prosperity at this, this month is, I am interconnected with one source. Blessings flow to, through, and as me. That's true not only this month, but every month, every day, every second. For as we are in that flow of abundance. You know, here's a funny thing. Abundance goes all ways. Abundance, if we're in a nasty mood, we're going to have an abundance of that. So make sure that you choose. Choose the good life. Choose the good things. Choose to see things in a special way. So I drew an affirmation for us this morning, since you're not here to draw one, and I'll post this on the Unity of Omaha Facebook feed afterwards. I am free from the bondage of old beliefs and judgments. How appropriate. That works well, doesn't it? So we'll get that posted. Also, I saw on the Facebook feed, people were asking about the film. It is I Heart the Huckabees, and know that you can come back and watch this video on Facebook or on YouTube and see that clip again. Or you're also welcome, it is available as The Blanket Truth, I Heart the Huckabee's The Blanket Truth on YouTube. So, anyway. So join me, because we've always been taught that if you hold a grateful heart, the grateful heart is not only for what you have, but for what is coming to you. And holding that energy as if it is already present. So we bless the tithes, gifts, offerings, the donations to the food pantry, all of those aspects, the love, the energy that flows in and through this community. And we know that as they flow in and through this community, they flow out through us to the world around us. And we hold gratitude for that. We hold thanks for that. Thanks for each and every one of you. Thanks for being here. And so it is. Amen. Just a quick reminder, I hope to see as many of you as possible on Zoom on Wednesday evening. Uh, we po I posted the link on the YouTube feed, I mean, excuse me, on the Facebook feed earlier. It's also going to be on our Facebook page, and if you forget it, email one of us, Becky at UnityOmaha.org, B-E-C-K-Y, or Brenda at UnityOmaha.org, and we will send you the link, because it's important that we come together every way possible. So shall we do the prayer for protection? Or do you want to do something else first? Okay. Larry, would you come over here for a moment, please? You know, COVID has put us all into some interesting times. 
And we don't get to do the things right now that we typically get to do. So we're going to make up for that right this minute. Larry and Krista were blessed with a baby girl in July, and um, we did not do anything for them at that time. And we decided that we wanted to bless you over Thanksgiving with a gift for the baby. And so the music team and Becky and Brenda, um, they all, we've all donated, and this is your gift. It is lots of baby food, organic, and, and good stuff. And, and we just wanted to say we love you, we appreciate you, and tell Krista we love her, and we hope and wish you the best. <laughs> There's never too much. There's never too much. <laughs> so, so, anyway, so Larry is, he's back there on, are you, what are you doing these days, bass or acoustic? He's, he's acoustic now. Okay, so Larry's back there on the acoustic guitar, <laughs> and he and Krista and the kids are part of our extended family here at Unity of Omaha. And so we are blessed. Okay, so the prayer for protection. Now, I would love to be able to hear what's going on in your home and that you are speaking this with us. I can't, so I look forward to you telling me at some point. Yes, I'm saying that with you because this is the way that we close out our services. So join me. The light of God surrounds me. The love of God enfolds me. The power of God protects me. The presence of God watches over me. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. And so it is. Are we really happy here with this lonely game we play? Looking for words to say. Searching but not finding understanding anywhere. Cause we're lost. Both afraid to say you were just too far away from being close together from the start. We try to talk it over, but the words get in. of leaving disappear every time I see your eyes no matter how hard I try 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 to understand the reasons we carry on this way cause we're lost in a mess
We try to talk it over, but the words got in the way. We're lost inside this lonely game we play. Thoughts of leaving disappear every time I see her eyes. No matter how. Try to understand the reasons why we carry on this way. We're lost in a masquerade. And we're lost in a man.